Excellent. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Bartis Chager. I'm the Member of Parliament for the Riding of Waterloo. And it's indeed a pleasure to be with you here today. And joined by my dear friends and colleagues from within the region of Waterloo, Tim Lewis, Member of Parliament for Kitchener-Conestoga, Valerie Bradford, Member of Parliament for Kitchener-South Hesper, as well as Brian May, Member of Parliament for Cambridge and Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of National Defence. Today we are also joined by a dear friend and colleague, the Honourable Marco Mendicino, Minister of Public Safety. He is here to make an announcement regarding federal support under the Cybersecurity Cooperation Program for the Quantum Safe Canada project right here at the University of Waterloo. Aujourd'hui, l'honorable Marco Mendicino, Ministre de la Sécurité publique, fera un annonce de financement concernant le soutien fédéral dans le cadre du programme de coopération en matière de cybersécurité pour un projet Quantum Safe Canada à l'Université de Waterloo. To give you an idea of how the, today's event will unfold, we will hear remarks from the Minister of Public Safety, the Honourable Marco Mendicino, followed by Dr. Michaela Mosta, Executive Director of the Quantum Safe Canada. He is also the co-founder of the Institute for Quantum Computing and professor in the Department of Com Combinatorics and Optimization in the Faculty of Mathematics. Following their remarks, there will be a question and answer session. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming the Honorable Marco Mendicino, Minister of Public Safety, to say a few words. Minister. Uh, bonjour tout le monde. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, as we begin, I would like to acknowledge that we're gathered today on the traditional territory of the Adwandaran, uh, the Anishinaabe, and the Haudenosaunee peoples. Uh, I also want to thank uh, you, Bardish, for that very warm introduction. It's always great to be back here in the KW. Uh, and to Tim, and to Brian, and to Valerie. Uh, great to see uh, friends in such a strong uh, caucus representation here for this happy announcement. Uh, I want to thank um, Michaeli at Quantum Safe and uh, everybody here at the U of W for uh, being so hospitable this morning, for offering your amazing campus with so much natural light, uh, for what was um, a very stimulating uh, conversation this morning. Um, you know, Michaeli, just before we get into the, um, uh, the, the substance of the announcement this morning, I asked him, you know, in plain and clear terms to explain the kind of uh, math that, that he, he teaches. And, and so he described it, uh, among other ways, as, as being the probability of an event being proportionate to the probability of the ways in which it may occur. And I just thought, um, okay, I'm going to need to take your class a little bit more uh, to get to the bottom of it. But it, it just uh, reflects, you know, on a more, uh, on a more thoughtful note, uh, just um, how grateful we are uh, to you and, and everybody uh, here at the campus at Quantum Safe at the Institute um, for just, you know, just being so bright and smart and intelligent um, as we uh, navigate these uh, really, really important and um, I think interesting times. Um, I want to begin with a, a simple premise, which is that in the 21st century, cybersecurity is national security. Je voudrais commencer par un constant simple. Au 20e siècle, la cybersécurité relève de la sécurité nationale. It's not news to anyone that nearly all aspects of our lives are now happening and occurring more and more online. And this has brought enormous benefits, connecting people like we have never had before and bringing prosperity to many who never had it before. But there are also risks, there are also vulnerabilities. And on a micro level, um, we know that hackers can take aim at every element of a person's cyber life, from banking to health to your Spotify account. And on a macro level, critical systems like power grids and telecommunications networks are ripe targets uh, for all manner of hostile actors. The threats, they exist. And as a government, it is our obligation uh, to work with some very important partners to make sure that we can mitigate against them. And so we are going to continue to innovate. We are going to make sure that we can bolster our defenses against those threats so that we can seize upon the unique opportunities that are presented by innovation and technology, including in quantum. And that brings me to the reason we are here today. 
I am very happy and very proud to announce that new federal support for Canada's cyber defenses will include an investment to Quantum Save Canada in the amount of $675,000. Now, these federal funds will come from the Cybersecurity Cooperation Program, which is an initiative intended to address one of the most serious threats to Canada's cybersecurity, and that is the quantum threat. Je suis très fier d'annoncer un nouveau soutien fédéral pour les cyberdéfenses du Canada. Quantum Safe Canada recevra 675 1000 de dollars de programme de coopération en matière de cybersécurité pour un programme visant à lutter contre l'un des risques les plus dangereux pour la cybersécurité du Canada, les menaces quantiques. Now, I don't have to tell the folks in this room and who work in this building about the quantum threat, but let me quickly summarize it. Put simply, quantum computers are the future. They have the potential to revolutionize technology and by extension all aspects of our lives. But that also means that we need to be sure that quantum computers will be able to resist hacking and any threats to uh, encryption, and, and that's exactly what we are going to be doing with today's announcement. And this is where the project comes in. It will help Canada to prepare for and respond to the quantum threat, coordinating research, technology, tools, and training. It will also ensure that those charged with protecting the systems that Canadians rely on have the knowledge and the skills they need. Quantum Safe Canada are the ideal team to lead these efforts, given that their very mission is addressing these threats. And I look forward to seeing their work in partnership with academia, governments, and industry. As I conclude today, I want to return to the beginning of my remarks. When I say that cybersecurity is national security, this is not just a slogan. It means that we must ensure that cybersecurity is seen first and foremost as a matter of protecting Canadians just as much as our physical border and our other critical infrastructure. And just as importantly, that we have the tools that we need to do the job. Lorsque je dis la cybersécurité est une question de sécurité nationale, Il ne s'agit pas d'un simple slogan. Cela signifie que nous devons veiller à ce que la cybersécurité soit considérée d'abord et avant tout comme une question de protection des Canadiens, au même titre que notre frontière physique et nos autres moyens de défense. Et ce qui est tout aussi important que nous disposions des outils nécessaires pour le faire. So we're acting. Earlier this year, we announced our intention to prohibit two hostile actors from Canadian networks given the unacceptable risks that they pose. Even more importantly, we introduced Bill C-26, the most important piece of legislation on cybersecurity in Canada in years. And Bill C-26 will entrench security as a fundamental objective of the Telecommunications Act, which gives the government the tools they need and that are necessary to secure Canada's telecoms systems. Equally importantly, it will introduce the Critical Cyber Systems Protection Act, and this will help organizations better prepare, prevent, and respond to cyber incidents across the financial, telecommunications, energy, and transportation sectors. I'm calling on my colleagues from all sides of the House to debate and pass it, and government is acting because we must ensure that we are prepared to face not only current threats, but future ones as well. It's this same vision that is behind the announcement. The reality, which many Canadians likely don't know, is that current infrastructure is vulnerable to the quantum technology of tomorrow, and that's precisely why we are acting today with this important announcement. So thank you very much for that. Merci, and I now will turn it back over to my colleague, Bardish. Thank you. Minister, thank you for that great announcement. Thank you for taking this matter really seriously, because I can tell you that here within the riding of Waterloo, within the region, we're hearing from citizens every single day. They are concerned and they want the government to step up. 
And what's clear is under the leadership of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and yourself in this portfolio, Minister, that we are stepping up. So I would just put out an offer to anyone who's listening, continue working with us. We need to know what you know. We need to know how we actually get to the results that you are looking to achieve. And as I always say, as much as the world needs more Canada, Canada needs more Waterloo. So you being here and making investments right here in this region, can, you can be assured that you will help achieve those outcomes and never hesitate to come back because you're always welcome. Without that, I would like to pass things over to Dr. Mosca and I would like to thank Dr. Mosca and the entire team for opening up your doors today, uh, for sharing your insights. I always say that within the Waterloo region, our best natural renewable resource is our people. It's the mind, it's the brain, it's having conversations and actually being innovative in the way we achieve solutions. So for you sharing your mind with us today and all the amazing uh, information within it means a lot. So thank you so much and thank you to your team. Dr. Mosca, over to you. Yeah, many thanks to uh, Bardish for uh, his kind uh, introduction and her constant support for all the, the work we do for Canada. Um, Minister Mendicino. Honourable Bartish Chagger, MPs Valerie Bradford, Tim Lewis, Brian May, colleagues, friends. Many of us in Canada and around the world have been on a mission for over two decades now. We want Canada and the world to, to safely usher in the transformational capabilities that quantum computing offers. Right? And as the Minister says, <clears throat> there's some risk to mitigate uh, along the way. Because in addition to all the positive applications that quantum computers bring, they will break the public key cryptography that essentially all of our critical infrastructures that we rely on depend. So it's a very serious threat, but really it's shining a light on a threat we already knew about, a hypothetical threat we already knew about, but we're largely ignoring. But quantum computing made it very acute because it, it, it shone a very clear path to breaking uh, these codes and really enabled us to do something we should have done anyway. So it's, it's in a sense, it's a blessing in disguise. We do want to highlight also that it's not just about protecting information. It's also about protecting things, right? We're moving more, this, the 90s was more about protecting information. Now we have driverless cars, robots, implanted medical devices, and so on and so on. So there's a massive safety issue as well as a sort of information security issue. Right? So for Canada to be safe and prosperous, we must first assure that the critical infrastructures our economy and security and safety rely on are upgraded to be safe against quantum-enabled attacks. And we can also benefit from new protections. We have to do more than reestablish the status quo, which was unacceptable, at least in, the, in today's age it is. Right? Quantum can help offer new protections. And Quantum Safe Canada, headquartered here in Waterloo and with friends and great activities all across Canada, our mission is very simple, it's twofold. To make sure Canada and Canadians and Canadian critical infrastructures are safe in the era with quantum technologies, and importantly, to make sure that Canadian, Canadian companies are at the forefront of providing the solutions, not just to Canada, but to others all around the world. Right? So we're delighted by the support we've received today. I mean, this investment by public safety into Quantum Safe Canada is focused on supporting our critical infrastructures to develop a quantum safety plan and on identifying the skills and training needed so we can upskill our workforce in time to realize this huge undertaking at hand. And complementary to this investment, I would like to say that we see Bill C-26, we're, we're happy that it recognizes the government's unique and critical role in building more resilient critical infrastructures and in clearly delineating the responsibility to protect against emerging cyber threats. We're generally responsive to today threats that are hurting us today. You know, the hidden danger, even an existential threat to, to the free world really, is emerging threats that we don't have time to remediate if we don't prepare in advance. Right? So we're delighted to see this, these proactive measures being supported by our government. This is a long journey and we're delighted to see these important building blocks in place and to be part of this important mission for Canada. Un grand merci au ministre et à tous nos amis de Sécurité publique Canada pour leur soutien exceptionnel envers ce travail très important. Merci beaucoup.
floor to questions. Please limit yourself to one question, one follow-up, and identify yourself and your media, please. Nous allons ouvrir le, le, le plancher aux questions. S'il vous plaît, vous limitez à une question et un follow-up. Et allez au micro pour les questions. Please go to the microphone for the questions. Merci. Uh, good morning. My name is Terry Pender. I'm with the Waterloo Region Record. Uh, McKellie, we spoke before, not too long ago. Um, you told me then that uh, it was about 15 years away before we'd have a commercially viable market for quantum computers, before we'd have a quantum computer. So how do we protect our critical infrastructure, or how do we protect anything against something that um, doesn't really exist on a practical commercial level yet? Yeah, so let me nuance that a bit more. It's, uh, we don't know exactly when. There's already a material chance of it happening in five years. I would say about 3%, uh, over 20, close to 30% chance in 10 years, and more likely than not uh, in, in less than 15 years. So that's kind of the risk profile. And given that we're talking about an existential threat, these are not probabilities we can just ignore. We need to mitigate. And it takes years and years and years to properly mitigate. If you rush, then there will be tremendous material costs to our safety and economic prosperity because systems will crash. We saw what happens with a you know, simple you know, system crash costs you know, a lot, billions of dollars to Canadians because one provider in one critical infrastructure was down for a day, right? It would be much, much worse if we, if we manage this as a crisis. Even the absence of cyber attackers, systems will go down. And then if you layer in the fact that there'll be active adversaries, it's really a devastation, a level of devastation we don't want to face. So how do we defend against? So we have to defend against. We don't have much time left to, because this is a massive undertaking. It's not a Tuesday update. It takes years to prepare the solutions, to prepare the workforce, to prepare the standards, and so on, to protect us against this threat. So abs absolutely, we need to have started yesterday. We did start yesterday. This, what's being supported now, is just a very critical next step in this long journey. Uh, how do we do it? Well, we understand the risk, we assess it, we plan, we prepare, and then ultimately, we make sure that production systems and our critical infrastructures have the tools to defend against uh, these, these impending quantum attacks. Agility is critical, readiness. So we don't just, you know, protect against this one threat, we need to build a stronger cyber immune system. And this exercise is, is doing that. It's protecting us against quantum threats, but it's also creating the communities and deeper structures that will allow us to respond quickly to other threats that we haven't even foreseen. But, but what is the, uh, like the mechanism? Is it software? Is it hardware? So it's a bit of both. So, you know, with security, you know, you lock the front door of the bank, right? That's not ultimate security, but it provides a very good layer of a, a sort of a good first layer of defense. So there's a great software solution uh, that replaces the current codes. At a high level, it's a plug-in replacement, but even that is a multi-year journey that's being undertaken by people all around the world. It's called post-quantum cryptography. Okay, sounds easy, but it takes many, many years, and Canada is actually one of the leading countries in that. That's not good enough because that reestablishes the status quo where maybe some smart mathematician somewhere in the world figures out how to break those new codes and all our systems are systemically, again, not just individually patchwork opportunistically, but systemically vulnerable. So we need additional layers of defense. And that's where new tools like quantum cryptography can give us a level of resilience we've never had, but we absolutely do need. It might have been okay in the 90s, in your day, as my daughter reminds me, but it, it's not good enough today. It's definitely not good enough 10 years from now given what's at stake nowadays. So it's a combination of software and hardware. Can I just add to that, that, I mean, the, the, the way that I would analogize this is, sticking with the metaphor that uh, Michaela used, is that the investment today is really about bolstering the front door and the locks that we are putting on it uh, through encryption, through investments for quantum to protect our information whether it's related to personal biometric or health information or financial information, um, we need to make sure that those safeguards are in place. And the government's announcement 
today here at the UW in partnership with Quantum Safe is about protecting uh, Canadians' privacy, their information, while at the same time leveraging the incredible skill and experience that you see on display here at the U of W as we innovate um, and take full advantage of the economic opportunities that are, that are, that are right there along with um, the risks that are presented. So this is, there are practical applications which will be derived from the, uh, the, you know, the, the research that is being done that will benefit Canadians. I don't see anybody else who can ask another question. Is that all right? Yeah. Over here. Something tells me you'll get a second round, though, so don't, don't go too far. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah. Hi. I'm uh, Chris with CTV News. Uh, just some questions about uh, some other news going on today, um, particularly the Public Safety Committee meeting uh, regarding the Halifax shooting investigation. Uh, your government and the RCMP commissioner have denied any kind of interference in that. Uh, can you just tell us maybe a little bit of what's going on there and uh, what the necessity of these uh, meetings are today? Well, um, the first thing I want to express is the, the ongoing support and sympathy for the families uh, of uh, the awful tragedies in port pic and Truro, uh, some of whom I've had the privilege of meeting with in person. Uh, in my capacity as Minister of Public Safety and um, you know there, there's no way really to describe the, the ongoing uh, sense of loss and anguish that they are feeling and these hearings have been difficult for them and I want to acknowledge that. Um, as you point out in your question uh, there are questions about uh, the relationship between um, the elected uh, representatives within government and um, members of law enforcement uh, within the RCMP. I think it's always important to remind folks that it is not the job of uh, elected politicians to conduct investigations um, and that is why you have heard uh, both um, my predecessor Minister Blair as well as uh, Commissioner Lucky say repeatedly um, that there was no interference um, in this particular matter and obviously that is because we respect the principle of operational independence. I think it's also important that the members of the Standing Committee on Public Safety are able to carry out their work in a manner that is independent, in a manner that is open and transparent because we don't ever want this kind of a tragedy to occur again. And I know that this is something that the members of the committee take very seriously. So um, we will uh, continue to uh, cooperate with that pro process as well as the Mass Casualty Commission which of course is uh, continuing to um, engage in its own proceedings in Nova Scotia. Okay. Thank you and just one more question regarding the Arrive Can app. There's recently been some loosening of uh, restrictions and rules with that particularly with fully vaccinated visitors not getting a fine anymore if they uh, miss some information or filling out the app. Uh, what can you say about the future of that app with this development and could we potentially see it uh, go away in the near future? Well, I would begin by, by noting that the two most essential and relevant questions that Arrive Can poses to all travelers are one, are you vaccinated to a standard that has been approved by Health Canada and two, are you symptom free? Which are logical, common sense questions that help us to mitigate against the ongoing risks around uh, transmission of, 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 the, of, of COVID uh, in Canada. Um, at the same time, um, we've been working very closely with industry leaders um, in travel, um, whether at the air or land ports of entry. We've been uh, engaging with uh, members of the labor sector, uh, particularly uh, on the front lines. Um, you know, I had a chance to meet with um, the union that, that represents the, the border officers within the CBSA recently and we've been engaging individually um, with individual communities especially those who are um, close to borders. Um, uh, we're here in uh, the southwestern region of Ontario. Um, I'm going to continue to engage with mayors and um, caucus colleagues and parliamentarians of all stripes as well as again those who represent the travel and tourism industry so that we can continue to find ways to streamline um, border experiences. On a positive note, I think it's great to see that more people are traveling again and the wheels of the economy are turning faster and that is a good thing. Um, but we're always going to 
be open to, to, to finding ways to, um, to, to make sure that, that technology, whether it's in the context of ArriveCAN or any other platform, is as efficient as possible. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Hi, uh, my name is Al Sweeney. I'm with CHCH News in Hamilton. So this is a, a, a two-part question, since I only get one question, for the minister and maybe you, Dr. Massa. I have to uh, report this story to a general audience who may not be up to speed in computer technology. First of all, could you give me a definition of a quantum computer as opposed to a regular computer that I work on every day? And could you say, what happens if there is a, a successful attack on a quantum computer? What would the consequences be? So I know that that question has been posed on this campus before, and I'm going to, um, in fact, defer to um, the true expert in this room, uh, who is, uh, who is uh, Michele. Uh, but, but given that um, this is a sophisticated area, I think it's really important that your readers and all Canadians know what this announcement means for them. And that is, in the long run, um, more protection and security for every aspect of their lives which intersects with um, online living and life. And you're talking about banking, you're talking about health, you're talking about your shopping, you name it. Um, this is about protecting Canadians' privacy and the information that is of value to them. And the only way that we can do that is if we invest in quantum to meet the challenges and the threats um, which are posed by those who see this information as being a ripe target, which can then be used in a way that is harmful. Um, and so that's what this announcement reflects. It's about meeting that challenge, but also seizing the economic opportunity, which, again, is on full display here at the U of W. I mean, this is one of the meccas of quantum. And that point was made abundantly clear in the conversation that we had this morning, not only with Michaela, but with many of the individuals who are here and who represent Quantum Safe and the Institute and other sectors, there, there is a veritable tre treasure trove of, of knowledge and wisdom about quantum. And it is not just about um, research. It, it is about taking from that research very practical applications which will protect Canadians and allow uh, Canada to seize upon the economic opportunities that lie ahead for us, which of course makes me very optimistic. But for the definition, <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to Michaela. Okay, thank you very much. So I'll actually try to paraphrase Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's definition. Um, after that event, a journalist asked me, you know, how would you, you know, how, score them out of 10? And I said, well, initially I thought seven, but then I upped it to a nine, not, not to, you know, uh, flatter, but I actually, because you know, you can't give a seven out of ten unless you explain what how to improve it. It was actually quite good. Then they asked me for my definition, and I, you know, I spent half a day trying to come up with a hundred word definition. Wrote the reporter back and said, "Oh, I just quickly came up with this," and uh, and then, but I showed it to my wife, and she said the prime minister's was way better. <laughs> so, so I'll just, I, I bet I'll just stick with the winner then. So, roughly speaking. Uh, Today's computers are based on encoding zeros and ones and then manipulating them, encoding information, processing it and extracting it. Quantum mechanics tells us anything that, anything that can encode a zero or a one can actually encode this complex continuum of states that somehow embody both zero and one. So it's, it's exponentially more complex, let's say. And therefore, if you build a computer based on these much more sophisticated, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, complex components, you get a form of computing that is exponentially more powerful than day-to-day -day computers. And they're not exponentially more powerful at everything, so I'm going to now digress a bit from what the Prime Minister said, but they can solve certain tasks exponentially better than other tasks, than we, than we could without quantum. So one task we know how to do with a quantum computer is break the codes underpinning internet security. 
and the security of things like the Arrive Can app. So it was a good question. I was struggling for the connection to this event, but I know what it was, and it was that information we put in Arrive Can. That's very personal information that can be recorded and decrypted later with a quantum computer. And I'm delighted the government is very proactive about making sure that the next generation of these apps will not expose Canadian citizens' information to these kinds of attacks. So, so one thing we know to do with quantum computers, not good it seems, which is to break codes. It's actually good because it's kind of like a vaccine. It will, it's forcing us to build a stronger cyber immune system and to defend against quantum and other future attacks. The other thing quantum computers are good at, we're still discovering, but we think it can help us find advanced medicines, advanced materials to you know, help us solve energy problems and climate problems and so on. So there's all these wonderful things. So I, you, know, you asked what's the risk of attacking a quantum computer. So the first risk is quantum computers can be used to attack systems. We need to neutralize that threat, and that's what today's announcement is all about, is getting us on the path to make sure quantum computers cannot compromise our, our digital platforms, right? But there are cyber criminals, uh, until we've done that, cyber criminals who hack into these large-scale quantum computers will be able to affect these very dangerous cyber attacks. And that's why it's absolutely critical for the safety of Canadians and our economy to, to get ahead of this. Okay. So, add one thing just because sure. you're saying you're referring to your audience and I think you know you've heard the minister refer to the importance of protecting Canadians and I think you've heard Dr. Mosca make the comment so this is not just about the protection of Canadians but it's also about providing Canadians the confidence to use those services because we're advancing as a country and as a world when it comes to technology but not everyone's been able to embrace it so they're looking at people who understand these areas to actually ensure that the protections are in place so that they have confidence in actually using those products and services and that's where I would just equate it to people's backyards. We want people to be able to use online banking and be confident when they do use that to know that the, their, their information is being protected and that they won't have unintended consequences. And I think that's where we're getting to is providing them the protections and confidence to use those services. So, so just, just one further question. I, I think we're getting there. <laughs> um, what's, say, the worst case scenario? If, if, these quantum if quantum computing isn't protected from hackers, what could they do to the average Canadian? Take all their, their banking information, their personal information, their, their information on the Arrive Can app? What well, I, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's certainly one of the more uh, serious threats. But I think we're focused on uh, preventing from the, those scenarios from occurring in the first instance. And what, what today's announcement demonstrates is that we are being very forward-leaning in that regard. We are not resting on our laurels. We are continuing to partner with um, industry leaders and um, scholar, scholars like we have here uh, to ensure that, again, that the front door, when it, we lock it, we're, we're confident um, that that the information that we are storing within our homes, whether it's physically or online, will be safe. And quantum is really a, a, a way to safeguard that information. And with the sophisticated technology that is developed from it, um, it can meet the challenges of those who would try to unlock that front door through you know, uh, cyber attacks, through ransomware, you know, through other sophisticated technologies. Uh, quantum is there to stop that from occurring. That's why this announcement is so important. And on a wider scale, uh, could they shut down national systems, provincial systems? Well, and precisely, that is one of the risks that we contemplate, and it's, it allows me to again highlight why Bill C-26 is so important. This is the legislation that would amend the Telecommunications Act to include security as a, an express um, objective uh, in, in that particular sector, but equally uh, to create a, a new piece of legislation that will focus on a number of core critical areas um, that, 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 that are implicated at, at our national critical infrastructure. So, um, you know, for example, the financial sector, the transportation sector, the energy sector. Um, those are, are sectors which, again, we know um, hostile actors are, are, are targeting actively every day. And we need to be sure that we have the legislative tools in place uh, to partner with um, industry leaders, including regulators who have the responsibility and the jurisdiction to set standards in those, in those respective sectors. Um, but that's not enough. It's not just about 
creating legislative tools, you also need to invest. And that's why we're here and are very happy uh, to be partnering with Quantum Safe uh, because they have that expertise, that knowledge, and that wisdom to develop this technology and to apply it in a very practical way to benefit Canadians, to protect their information, to make sure that they are confident that when they go online, that their information will be safe. Merci beaucoup. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah.